Guys, this building behind me is absolutely beautiful. But what we're here to talk about today is this crazy wall section. It's like fluffy marijuana concrete. It's actually called hempcrete. And you're gonna see the entire process, guys, from mixing it to forming it to pouring on today's episode. This is really gonna be a fun one. Today's build show, all about hemp concrete. Let's get going. Guys, I'm coming to you from a beautiful hill country job site here where we've got a building that is absolutely drop dead gorgeous under construction. Japanese inspired architecture, and in fact, the timber frame, the skeleton in here, is timber framing from Japan that the wood itself is three or 400 years old. We're actually not sure how old it is. But let's first start talking about this right here, which I think is super interesting. This is hempcrete, and I actually have the main man here, Matty. Matty, you're with Hempitecture. You're the contractor on the hempcrete, but you're also kind of the North American uh, hempcrete guy, right? And, you, right? and you're actually selling these materials to other builders who are building with it. Tell me about this. What is this? Yeah, so what we're looking at here is a hempcrete wall system. It is a combination of industrial hemp, the wooden core of it, okay. and a specialized blend of limestone. Okay, so uh, let me break that down. This is the bag of the hemp, and that's what this looks like. It's, it's kind of, it looks to me almost like a wood fiber, like I was about to make OSB or particle board or something, right? It, it looks just like wood chips, Matt. And then this is, a, a, for lack of a better term, a cement, right? A it, binder. It is a binder, and it has a component of natural cement and limestone in it. Okay. And you're mixing that in a big kind of industrial mixer on the job site, maybe two yards at a time, and then pouring it into a form to get, to get this. It almost looks like rammed earth or some other type of uh, kind of built up uh, product. Is that right? Yeah, that, that's right. And really the first thing we do when we mix these together is we add water. We mix it with water. It's a very uh, controlled amount of water. Mm -hmm. We bring that over from the mixing station to our wall and we tamp it in forms, which is why it has that rammed earth aesthetic. But this is not a structural wall, right? There's actually some structure embedded in this wall. Is that right? That's right. As of now, it's treated as a non-structural wall infill material that's also highly insulating. So this okay. is our insulation, this is our sheetrock, it's multiple materials in one. Ah, oh, okay. So this particular wall section here, Matty, we talked about this earlier. This is like 10 inch thick, right? 10 inches thick. And in the center of that is a two by four framing, which is the, for lack of a better term, the bones for the building. It's that's the exactly structure. Right. And then the hempcrete that you've made on site, that you've kind of mixed on site, is the muscles and the fat and all Absolutely. the other tissue that makes up the body of the building. And then will this be left exposed on the outside? This will not be left exposed. It's gonna get covered with a vapor permeable lime based plaster, uh, usually in two to three coats. And that's gonna give this product a long lasting life. Okay, so almost like a, sort of like a stucco finish, right? Not a non-painted stucco looking finish on the outside. Lime plaster uh, can be used inside or outside. Mm -hmm. One cool thing about this architecture, is you've got overhangs everywhere. Um, but what are the what are the kind of big properties? What what do people like about this hempcrete? What what is it that compels us to use this? Well, first off, from a building perspective, it's really insulating. Mm -hmm. About R two point five to R three per inch, depending oh. on your mixture. Nice, so that's pretty good. So we've got an R thirty wall right here. We've got an R thirty wall. Right that's a big here. deal. The second thing is uh, an environmental reason. Industrial hemp, when it's growing, when, and it's harvested on a uh, two to three month cycle it's absorbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and storing it into the hemp stalk itself. Gotcha. When we combine it with our binder, a reaction occurs that also seeks carbon dioxide from the huh. air and actually stores it in the wall. So we've got a carbon sequestering, thick, insulative wall here. Isn't there some fire benefits to this as well? That's right. Uh, the fire benefits of hempcrete is that it's 100% fireproof. Wow. It will not burn. We could take a torch to this. We could try it all day long. It will not catch on fire. Dang, that's pretty cool. There's a lot of benefits to using this. That's right. Now, I made kind of the, uh, uh, not inflammatory, but the, uh, the bold statement that this was a fluffy marijuana wall. It's not really marijuana. For, for those of you who are gonna comment about that, let's preempt that. What's the relationship between industrial hemp and marijuana? 
to really simplify it, industrial hemp is sort of like the sober cousin of THC producing cannabis. It is used as an agricultural commodity. Mm -hmm. It's been used since the beginning of time to make ropes, sails that brought explorers to discover the new huh. world. Uh, it's used in all sorts of products and primarily uh, industrial applications. And are there, are there companies today that are using industrial hemp in, uh, in fabrication or manufacturing that you can think of? Interestingly, in Europe, a lot of automotive companies are using hemp fiber in automotive panels. There's mm. now companies in the United States that are making hemp wood uh, replacements for you know, conventional wood-based products. Uh, even hemp bioplastics are becoming a new uh, tangible idea. Wow, very interesting so so this hemp this industrial hemp it's a plant that grows in a field you're stripping the outside and that core that stalk that as i said earlier kind of feels like a wood chip almost right. is what we're talking about here there's this really has nothing to do with marijuana except that it's a cousin uh product or a cousin plant i should say to that um, but there's nothing here you can smoke that you can uh, get high on or any of that kind of stuff. This is the sober cousin. That's right. I, li I like that term. That's right. Maddie, let's transition to actually showing people how you form and, for lack of a better term, pour this. Okay, so we got a fresh batch of hempcrete made right here. Let's take a look at what the form boards look like. Now, if you look at the outside of the a finished wall, you can see there's kind of a strata going on, almost like a rammed earth project. And this has some similarities. This is the form board right here. They're basically doing this in two foot lifts or two foot sections. So we've got a poured section down below here. You're gonna notice the electrical conduits in. We've already run that, the electrician's been here. You're also gonna notice that the structure is inside the middle of the wall. Now, most of the walls are framed just with two bys, and in fact, two by fours on a lot of the wall. But this particular, particular section of the wall is a sheer wall section, and the engineer has designed a moment frame. This is basically just a U-shaped piece of tube steel that's been welded together and bolted to the foundation. And that's gonna keep the shear value, the, the building from racking. Now, what's interesting about how they do the form boards, I think, is these form boards need to be released later. And so they want the minimum amount of attachment that's gonna hold it while it's being formed, but also to be able to remove it without a lot of damage. Now they're using kind of an interesting product. They're using Fasten Masters timber lock screws. If you're not familiar with these, we use these a lot in construction. You're gonna be able to replace a lag screw with this. But what these are doing is just giving us a temporary hold. You'll notice they're putting a fender washer on the outside so they can get some good bite on this OSB uh, plywood. This is three quarters inch thick, so it's nice and strong. And then to make sure it's spaced off correctly, they've got a piece of PVC pipe here that's cut the correct distance. I believe these walls are somewhere around 10 inches thick, although this one I think might be slightly thicker. And they're running it from this post right here, which is a structural and also beautiful post that they're gonna express. And then on the outside here, this is gonna be a door, so they just have a piece of OSB as the form there as well. Now, the other thing that's interesting is this won't grab on to, uh, to steel, just smooth steel. What I'm talking about is the hempcrete, that is. So what the engineer did was they've, they've got these bolts that are uh, actually welded on as a tab, and that's gonna give that hempcrete something to actually bite onto. Now, currently the hempcrete is not given shear value for this project. The engineer is not relying on that for shear. But I think that in time, as we use this more in America, probably engineers are gonna get more comfortable with it. They'll be able to assign some shear value because as you, as you touch and feel it, it's very hard. It's not as hard as a cement or you know, a, a concrete wall, let's say, but it's got a lot of, um, it feels very stiff. There seems like there's a lot of mass on it. And then when these form boards get replaced, eventually on the inside and the outside, they're gonna put a, um, a plaster, a line-based plaster on here. So that this, what you're seeing here with the strata, this isn't actually the finished look. Maddie, walk us through what you're actually doing, putting the hempcrete into the forms. Yeah, so we've got our hempcrete in the buckets and what we need to do is first we're gonna dump some in but it's a controlled amount. We don't want to over pour. Mm -hmm. um, this is a very controlled process where we build in layers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this bucket on the edge of the form board, carefully dump some in here. That's step number one. Step number two is we rake it out level. So uh -huh. we want to build up in even layers. After we rake it out level, 
We then grab our tamping tools. We take the long side of the tamping tool. That looks like a little homemade tool right there, isn't it? These are it? totally homemade, yeah. <laughs> nice, Matty. Yep, yep. And we take these, we put them right on the edge of the form board. Uh, we're packing really firmly along the edge of the form board, but we're leaving it looser in the wall. Okay. Uh, and, and you're not like putting body weight on it. It's more like a tamp. Yeah, it's more of a tamp. Um, you know, this is kind of a marathon. It's, uh, you don't yeah. want to do something that's so labor intensive and, and you know, you're pounding it too hard. This is more of just a, you're stamping the edge. Got it. And so when we move through this, what you'll see is a stamped edge along the form board and it's looser in the middle. Awesome. Let's do it, man. Let's Show us it. what to do. Uh, and so you've got Deshaun on the outside and you on the inside so that you're kind of uh, even. Yeah, we're, it, we're working together on this wall because we have these steel posts. Yep, the shear posts in the way. A lot of times we'll fully sheet one side and work from the other side. Got uh, it. That's kind of a more efficient way of doing it, but this is a little bit too far of a reach. So we've now got this material in the wall. I'm gonna rake it out, spread it evenly. And you're looking to go about two inches or so? Is that what you told me yeah, per lift? Yeah, two inches is about where we wanna be. And you're just using your hands to kind of level it out. There's no special, uh, it doesn't need to be perfectly level. It doesn't need to be perfectly level. Um, and a you know, lower portion of the form board, we can just stick this in and use this as a rake. So I'm gonna start down here. Uh, we have a removable form board, so we wanna have a good tamped edge. Mm -hmm. So I'll take the back side of my tool here, really press that in. And then I like to use the long side of the tool. And I'm just gonna work right along the edge of the form board. Yep. And you can really start to see that stamped edge coming out. So one of the things that you're, is so noticeable when you walk up to these walls, uh, Maddie, they're so crisp, they're really flat. Your form works really, really nice. My assumption would be your whatever, however good or flat your form work is, ultimately means however good and flat the wall is going to be, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Form boarding is really key to having a good, high quality, finished product. Yeah. After I tamp the edge there, and you can really see uh, that stamped edge. Sometimes I'll just take my hand and just gently kind of tap that yeah you're together. hand tamping hand tamping and that's the process right and then you're there. ready for the next lift yeah this, this. Is this is definitely takes some time doesn't it it sure does if you're not bothered with the uh random youtube crew <laughs> how long would it take <laughs> for you to do a, a two foot form board section like this normally for you and deshaun uh depending on the run you know maybe uh 30 minutes okay um, if we're really cruising you know 20 minutes it's not bad what really uh, determines how long this takes is how much is in the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, if we have electrical conduit and things that we're working in around, we really need to be conscious of that. So yep. we're working around it really carefully. Makes sense. So now you can see that when I dump this in, it's kind of gathered to the back. What I want to do is just rake, pull it down the wall. Okay. Leveling it out and level being a relative term. Yeah, it doesn't need a perfect level. And I'm also tamping pretty firmly over here because this green form board is temporary. It'll be pulled off and mm. we'll actually see the hempcrete return into our window buck right okay. here. Actually our door buck, I should say. And there's no release agent on these forms, right? You didn't have to put wax or anything else like you would if it was a concrete form. Correct. We can just uh, pull the screws off um, and this form will come right off. People often ask how long until you're ready to move the forms. Mm -hmm. You can remove the forms as quickly as you could form it. Ah. Generally, we like to always stack another form board on top of the Before form board that we already it. have. Smart. That way you're, you started level, you're going to continue level exactly. up the wall. Exactly. We just continue level up the wall. And this is basically just a half rip of plywood, right? It's a two foot sheet ripped yeah. in half. Yeah. So we're using a yeah, three quarter inch OSB, ripping it right in half. Uh, but on sides that are uh, less difficult to work around, we'll just take four by eight sheets. We don't even need to rip them down. Uh -huh. And we'll just go all the way up. Got it. Um, those walls over there were completely formed on the inside. So we were all on the inside. And uh, So those big long runs, there. you were able to get a four foot section in there. Absolutely. As long as you can reach down in the middle of the form. Absolutely. Cool. Now, what are those white wood boards in there doing? That was a joke. <laughs> that was a joke. Say where? Oh, that no. was a joke.
Guys, so cool to see how Maddie and the crew from Hempitecture formed and poured this. It is a beautiful cake uh, that you baked here, my friend. <laughs> but the rest of the architecture here is pretty stunning as well. What's going on with this house? Give us the backstory here, Maddie. The backstory is that this is a Minka house. It's a post and beam from Japan, about 350, maybe 400 years old. Wow shipped over in parts and pieces and reassembled by a team of Japanese carpenters. Dang. These guys didn't have any electric saws. <laughs> they used uh, mallets and hand saws. So all the that timber thing. we're seeing inside, that's like 400 year old Japanese timber that some Japanese carpenters came in and assembled here on this Texas site. That's right, now it's got a new life. Wow, now who, who's the designer here? So the designer is Axel Vervoet, a mm -hmm. Belgian-based designer, and he worked in collaboration with Mood Architecture, a okay. uh, firm out of Belgium, and then also a local architect, uh, Mel Lawrence Architects here yeah. in Austin, Texas. Mel's a fantastic architect. And then who's the builder here on site? The builder is Chad Burnell with okay. Earth in Motion. Gotcha, man, beautiful. Um, are these this cedar that you're seeing on this porch that's we see that all the time in fact we're among cedar trees all those trees just to the left are all cedars did you tell me earlier those are all locally sourced? They were all sourced from the property that we're standing on right now. They Man. went out and found trees with the right caliper size. Uh -huh. They had an industrial pressure washer, pressure washed the bark off of them. That? So it is all from the property so that we're on. So all those posts and all the rafters are, are, are straight from this ranch that that's we're on right. right here. Man, that's really cool. What a story. Um, tell me about a couple details. You know, as I'm, as I'm walking around this house, the first thing I thought was, how do you install a window and door on mm -hmm. this? You know, you're, you're probably not gonna take a screw into the hempcrete, right? That's right, that's right. Yeah, so with our frame being inset to the wall or on center, as mm -hmm. we call it, we're gonna use a flangeless mm -hmm. style window that's gonna be basically set into the window frame, right. uh, backer rod and sealed around it, and the lime plaster is gonna return right into the window. So it'll be a real clean, nice looking aesthetic. Gotcha, that makes sense. So you're gonna use like a Shuko European window flangeless we're going to screw right through that jam into that two by four which is right in the center which by the way it means we've eliminated all our thermal bridging this no is going to be a really bridging. high performance house it also has some mass to it as well so that that thermal mass is going to want to stay the same temperature mm -hmm. as well as have uh, a bunch of air pockets in there which are making that high r value for the walls how do you insulate the roof on this project, Patty? This roof is rather unique. Uh, there's two layers of our product called hemp wool. It's mm -hmm. a fiber bat insulation made from plant fiber from huh. industrial hemp. Okay. So 92% of the overall content of it is plant fiber. There's two layers of that to reduce thermal bridging, which is R40 right there. Then there's two layers of Gutex, which is a wood fiber board from Germany. Ah, I saw that when I was in uh, Germany at the Bal Show. We, yeah. That's not, that's totally almost unheard of here in America, but pretty common when I traveled through Switzerland and Germany. Wow, it's an amazing wild. product and, and very then, insulating. Yeah, and then of course, on top of that, you've got this gorgeous uh, cedar shingle roof too, or cedar shake roof, I should say. I mean, it's gonna be an incredible, incredible architecture when it's all done. Um, Tell me about what else you can do from hemp, right? Because you mentioned you've got hemp insulation mm -hmm. that's more mm -hmm. like a traditional bat insulation. Mm -hmm. Are there other ways that you could use hempcrete? Yeah, so really the easiest way to incorporate plant-based building materials into your home is probably using hemp wool, but there's other products. We can spray apply hempcrete. Mm -hmm. We source hempcrete building blocks from other countries that are making them on a large scale. So we have these different options here in the United States that we can now start using. I love it. You've got a couple mock-ups on site. Let's go check out those mock-ups. All right, Maddie, so you got a couple mock-ups that you built before construction started. Let's talk through these three. What is this first mock-up? So this first mock-up is using uh, hempcrete building blocks. They're mortared together. This is actually a two foot thick wall assembly. Woo! Dang. A lot, a lot of R value in And that. so how big is this block that we're seeing here that's made out of hemp? The block is about two feet by one foot. Okay, and what are you using to, to mortar them together? We're actually using a hempcrete binder, the same stuff that we're using ah. in our cast and place recipe. We're using to mortar the two blocks together. Gotcha, and then what is this that we're seeing here as the final finish, this kind of stucco looking product? Yeah, so this is a breathable lime-based plaster uh, that's usually applied in two to three layers. And okay. so this is a weather-resistive coating that will last for the life of the building. 
Wow, beautiful. And non-painted, it's all color integral, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, actually, you incorporate a little bit of pigment into it. And so you can see we do have some kind of color swatches on mm -hmm. this wall where we've got different pigments incorporated into that final coat so that it's tinted uh, however the client desires. Gotcha. Now, this is not what you built with, though. This is just an option. Correct. And this mock-up is actually pretty similar to what you built with, or is the same wall assembly as what you used, right? This is very much so what we are doing right next door in the Minka. Yeah. So we've got a two by four right in the center. You can see in front and behind that, we've got a couple inches of hemcrete. So those two by fours are buried in the wall, so to speak. But because that hemcrete is for, I hate the term breathable, but it's the, the term that we use. Uh, it's vapor, it's vapor, vapor open, yeah. meaning if it gets wet, it can dry to the inside or the outside, which really means that you could use this in any climate zone. That's right, that's right. And one of the amazing things about this is that this has been sitting outside, unprotected, uncovered for over a year. Oh, wow, and it's not breaking down. It's the, you would think that there might be some uh, degradation of the fiber or, um, or maybe even, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Decay, right, yeah. of the hemp, and mm -hmm. that's, not that's not the case? That's not happening, and what we're also not seeing, which is huge, is no mold. Oh, that's right, and it's sitting out too, and there's no mold tomorrow. and there's no decay. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why is that fiber from the plant not decaying or not molding? That's a really good question, Matt, and the short answer to kind of a long uh, question is the fiber itself, the core, mm -hmm. is petrified. It is essentially made inert by the process huh. of being mixed together with our binder, okay. which has a high alkalinity, uh. making it resistant to mold, and that organic aggregate becomes a lot less like plant matter and a lot more like a stone. And that's also why you guys are wearing PPE, right? You're not right. touching that with your bare hands. You've got long sleeves on because that lime, if that gets in your skin, is really going to irritate you. It's, it's in effect could burn your skin, right? That's right. And, and the other uh, very critical element of that equation is, you know, we're always making sure we have uh, face protection on. Mm -hmm. We're protecting our lungs, our yep. nose, mouth uh, while we're mixing hempcrete. Got it. What's the last mock-up? So this last mock-up is a little bit of a different sort of style where we have a frame shifted to one side. Mm -hmm. It's using a different kind of binder and hemp. Uh, these mock-ups did kind of play with different types of binder methods, mm -hmm. um, but this was primarily done just to see what hempcrete would look like flushing out to studs mm. because we do have some partition walls inside mm. where we're just infilling in between the partition walls gotcha. as opposed to burying that frame on center to our wall. But if you wanted to vary the way you did this, on the outside is your full hempcrete that has plaster on it, right? Mm -hmm. And that could be your exterior finish. Mm -hmm. And on the inside, if you didn't want that, you could hang drywall, you could do other wood finishes or whatever and have your studs to the inside of the building, which also would be a good assembly. And this is kind of interesting. Look, you've got a little mold growing on your wood, <laughs> but there's not that growth on the hempcrete That's as well. Right. That's right. You know, this does bring up one interesting question. I saw in the building all the way around that your bottom plate, that two by four treated mm -hmm. uh, bottom plate mm -hmm. is wrapped with a, uh, you know, a, a vapor barrier, for lack of a better term, a plastic mm -hmm. um, asphaltic uh, flashing. Tell me about that. Why is that? Yeah, that's a really good question, Matt. What we don't want to have happen is moisture to migrate up through the concrete into the hempcrete wall. So it's mm. essentially our damp proof course that's going Stopping. to pro provide a barrier between our concrete and the hempcrete above. Right. So you wouldn't just pour a slab and then go hempcrete right above that. You always want something to uh, to stop that rising damp that's right. uh, and be a capillary break that's as right. well. And then also that bottom plate's giving you the structure to land on. And then I think you told me earlier where you're seeing that protecto wrap on the outside of this other building, you're going to uh, put a lath over top of that mm -hmm. and then the plaster will just cover that. You won't see that. It'll be invisible. Maddie, impressive, man. Your crew top notch, the architecture here, beautiful. The builder's doing a great job. So fun to meet you, man. How can like people us. get a hold of you if they're interested in any of these products or doing uh, hemcrete on their project? 
The first place to start is to visit our website, www.hempitecture.com. We've got a lot of information, a lot of resources there. We've got YouTube videos where people can learn and see, is this right for me? Is this something that I want to explore? Uh, feel free to send us a message through our website. We'd be happy to get back to you and learn more about your project and how we can help you out. Yeah, and also I'll tell you guys, uh, Maddie's got an awesome Instagram feed with some gorgeous <laughs> pictures of this job site that I stalked. It's one of the reasons why I got a chance to get out here. Um, just to clarify, this is not a sponsored video. Uh, we've not exchanged any money. I just thought this was really cool. So guys, go check out Maddie's site. If you're not currently a subscriber to The Build Show, though, we publish every Tuesday and every Friday. And oh, by the way, on Build Show Network, we have five new videos a week. So go check that out as well. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Yeah.